that I specifically tag and demand video responses from Peach, Thunderfoot, ZJ, Coughlin, Bionic Dance. Ah, Hades. Looks like I'm up. Let's do this. Hey there, so the sociology department of Berkeley University is currently conducting an academic study on atheists. First question, were you raised atheist or did you have a religious bringing of some sort? Truth to tell, that's kind of a complicated question, actually. Um, technically, I suppose the answer is no, but I was raised around religion, even though I wasn't raised to be religious. You see, my dad was basically raised Catholic, Italian Catholic, and uh, even before I was adopted, he basically said, fuck that shit, and was sort of on this, like, I don't know, religious odyssey ever since, until I guess recently. Um, and my mom was largely indifferent to being Jewish, although we did on occasion celebrate like Hanukkah and Passover and shit. So uh, I got to see that. But as a result of my dad's sort of spiritual journey, I got to see a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, for example, my parents tried this weird, like, Hindu Siddha yoga thing for a while. But uh, even though I was taken to an ashram once or twice when I was younger, uh, I was not, like, raised to be uh, uh, Hindu, I guess. I'm not even sure if it was Hindu. I don't know. Looking back on it, in a weird way, I kind of think we might have been in a cult for a year, but... I'm not so sure. I, I just know that my parents did a shit ton of chanting and, and I, I didn't know really what it was. Um, I do remember, I think it was a little bit before that, I was, uh, I must have been like seven or eight or maybe nine or something. Uh, I asked my parents actually if I could learn what this religion thing was all about because we didn't really have any. And, uh, you know, my, my friends seemed to, or some of them did, and I, I was curious. So my parents said, okay, sure, we'll, we'll go to a church for a while, but then they chose uh, a Unitarian church, and that's about as white bread as you can get. That's like, you know, no frills, there's barely even any dogma or anything. It's, it's well, let's worship God, but, but not really, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a Unitarian is pretty bland. Um, and, and even then, it wasn't like I got to see any of the church stuff because I was so young, I didn't go to any of the services or anything. I was actually in, like, like I guess they call it like a youth group or something. And it was basically daycare. I mean, there was no real religious shit in there at all. It was basically just daycare. And so... Uh, you know, I, I really didn't get a chance to, to learn what religion was, even though I had asked my parents to take me to a church so I could learn what the heck it was. So really, like I say, I was raised around religion, but I was never really raised to be religious. And I guess that may have had an effect on uh, my, my lack of belief later, my, my disbelief later, but... Um, I'm not so sure that, that I can really say that I was raised without religion. I, I just know that I was not raised to be religious, if that makes sense. And there are two subpoints here asking for further details. You will obviously only have to answer one of them. And the second subpoint, if raised atheist, have you ever been drawn to religion at any point in your life? Why or why not? I'm thinking I already answered that in the first part, actually. Second question, overall, would you say that other people's belief in God is a good thing, a bad thing, or something you're indifferent about? And why? And please take note that this question is not asking your opinion on organized religion, just the belief in God. You know, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% certain I understand the question. Or rather, I see two ways that the question could be interpreted, and I'm not sure which one to go with. Because, is it just the fact that people are believing in a god or what belief in a god may make them do because i realize it's not about organized religion so that leads me to think that it, it may be the former that it's just belief that that we're talking about here 
or if it's their behavior as a result of believing, because those are two different things. I'll try to answer them both as succinctly as possible, though. Um, I would say that if you're believing in something for bad reasons on faith, and if that kind of thinking were to spill over into other aspects of your life, that's a very bad thing. I mean, if the faith was confined solely to belief in a deity and, and for everything else you demanded evidence, I'd still say that's bad, but it's not as bad. Now, when people believe in a deity, that usually comes with dogma. It may not, but it usually does. And that kind of dogma usually makes people do horrible things. Um, I mean, it, it tends to come with things like misogyny and homophobia and all of that stuff. And, and that's a bad thing. So I'm actually having a very difficult time seeing how belief in a deity can be a good thing. I mean, one way or another, it's going to lead you to do something I disapprove of. So I'd have to say, yes, it's, it's bad, it's harmful. Third question. Have you ever been treated differently by people because you're an atheist? If so, please describe this in detail. Not that I can recall. If there's ever been an incident, it's usually been like somebody starts to do a religious ritual or something, they invite me to participate, and I'm like, that's not my thing. And they'll be like, oh, well, okay. You know, I mean, it's, it's always been like, like uh, gosh, I didn't realize you were an atheist. Oh, well, whatever, shrug. So, gotta go with no. Mind you, that's just in the offline world. Online is quite a different story, because I'm pretty outspoken and, well... Fourth one. If not a religious person, do you consider yourself to be a spiritual person? Why or why not? Well, I don't even know what you mean by spiritual, so how can I answer this? And I would also be interested to know how you define or what you consider spirituality to be. So that burden's on me, huh? Alright, well... I'm gonna go with no, because generally when people talk about spirituality, uh, well, in my head, I start thinking about non-religious but still supernatural. And I'm thinking the supernatural, I've never seen any evidence of it, so I don't think it exists, so no, I'm not a spiritual person. I mean, I'm not into crystals or tarot cards or any of that stuff. I, I don't use a Ouija board. You know, I, I, I don't get into what James Randi would call woo-woo. I just don't do it. Now, that said, when Christopher Hitchens would use the term numinous, he would mean that which we find wondrous, or, or that which, which seems to get us fired up in certain ways. Maybe not, you know, in like an adrenalized sort of way, but just sort of a, a passionate kind of way. And in that way, yes, I am spiritual. I can name a number of movies or events or, or just things that have made me go, ooh, that's awesome, oh my gosh, that's awesome. I mean, even just the right kind of sunset or the right kind of stars can make me feel what Christopher Hitchens would call the numinous. Uh, the movie Explorers, oh my goodness, you have no idea how much that movie fires me up. It's like, wow, I wish I could have dreams of circuit boards that would let me build a spaceship and go meet the aliens that sent me the dreams. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Or if you've seen my video where I went to see the space shuttle, Okay, when I was in New York City and I got onto that aircraft carrier that had the freaking space shuttle on it, oh my goodness. You may have noticed a space theme here. There's something about space that, that just makes me go, ooh. I mean, Neil Armstrong just died, and that is a tragedy like you wouldn't believe. We're losing all our heroes and we're not making new ones. But, I mean, this guy walked on the moon. On the freaking moon. Will I ever get to walk on the moon? I don't know. But the very thought of that, the thought of going in one of those rockets and going to the freaking moon just makes me go, wow. And, and it, it gets my spirit going and it makes me, it fills me with wonder, that, that sense of, of, oh my gosh, that, that we seem to have lost in recent years and, and it bothers me greatly that we have. But 
I think that the way I feel about about those things, about space, about manned space flight, about um, I mean, looking at the stars or seeing the right kind of sunset, even a certain kind of foggy day can do it. It just, it makes me feel like something awesome is going to happen. That's probably how the religious feel when they're worshiping, I bet. I'm willing to bet if we could hook up like an EEG or something to people's heads and we could measure their brain activity when they're feeling these certain ways, I bet they'd be very similar. So I guess in that way you might be able to call me a spiritual person, but I kind of reject the word because it has baggage. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not really sure what other people mean by spiritual, but if by spiritual we mean what Christopher Hitchens meant when he said numinous, then yes, I guess you could call me a spiritual person. But if by spiritual you mean believing in the supernatural, then no. I hope that answers the question. And the fifth and final question. For many people, the belief in God provides hope or comfort with respect to suffering in the world and the inevitability of death. As an atheist, how do you come to terms with these things? Well, if there's people suffering around the world, it just means that my evil minions are doing their job. Okay, no, seriously, when it comes to suffering like that, I mean, I've, I've done my best to pay it forward as much as I can. Uh, I've been part of more than a few charity drives or charity blog TVs or whatever. Uh, I don't do that in the name of atheism, by the way. I mean, okay, granted, a lot of those charity drives have been organized by atheists, but rarely was, was atheism really a part of that beyond how we organized it, you know? It's like, oh, by the way, these are people I happen to know, and they all happen to be atheists, and we're organizing this drive. It's not like, well, in the name of not believing in a god, we are going to try to help these suffering people by raising money. No, it was, it was never like that. So, as an atheist, I don't really do much of anything to help other people's suffering around the world. If I'm going to help them, it's going to be out of out of empathy or compassion and has nothing to do with with not believing in a god uh, as to the inevitability of death i do think about that from time to time um i can't even imagine what it would be like to be dead i mean i would imagine it would be like a dreamless sleep where i'm just not even aware of it but it's it's hard to picture uh and I think the part about death that I don't like, it's, it's not so much the, the being gone as it is not getting to do the things I want to do. I mean, I said it before, I hate that we have basically given up on manned space flight. And right now the only way to get to do that, to get to go to space, is kind of to be a rich motherfucker and go with some of the, the private... Uh, space flight that that's starting to crop up just starting to crop up and that is something that I want to do before I die is go to space to see what that's like to be part of exploration to do all of that I mean I was probably born 200 years too early at least you know I want to live in a world where space flight is commonplace and I'm not going to get to do that unless some sort of life extension technology is developed and it does bother me that I will miss out on those things because of death but the actually being dead that doesn't worry me too much I mean I don't want to be dead because I'll miss out on things but but other than that I mean, death doesn't really scare me. Maybe the method of death is a little bit scary because there are some nasty ways to go. But once I'm dead, my worries are over. You know, I mean, it's, it's not going to be that big a deal because it's not going to be any deal at all. I mean, what am I supposed to worry about? I, I, I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, the idea of, of dying is, is scary, but... When I think about the ways that religious people cope with the notion of death, I, you know, by basically telling themselves fairy tales about an afterlife that they can't prove exists, well, 
I mean, I, I don't need that. I don't need to lie to myself, to basically lie to myself, to be comforted about the fact that one day I will cease to exist as a thinking, feeling being. I don't need that. So. And they're also encouraging you to give any additional information or further thoughts. I like cheese! Okay, I should probably tag a few folks. I hate doing this because I can never think of who to tag, but fuck it. Okay, I think I got three people I'm going to tag. All babies are atheists. Consider yourself tagged. Come on down. Griffin9857. Boy, do I ever hope I got that right. It could be 8675309 for all I know. I hate it when people have a random string of numbers at the end of their name, but you're tagged. Come on down. And speaking of people with numbers at the end of their name, Noel Plum 99 consider yourself tagged. <laughs> Come on down. All right, until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying, catch you like the plague. Please take the time to rate this video. And hey, if you dig what I do, subscribe. And please visit my Sazzle store, where you'll find all kinds of Bionic Dance merchandise. People not subscribing to Bionic Dance is one sign of the apocalypse. Save us all! Subscribe now!